Okay. So number two, uh, we're just estimating the slope here and estimating the slope over here. Estimating the slope for two different points on the graph. The slope of this tangent line. It's just an estimate. So it looks like well, it's kind of a, a tough one because that point isn't right on the grid, right? But this one kind of is. I'm going to use this one right here because this one kind of is on the grid. And so is this guy right there, right? Agreed? Mm. Kind of looks that way? You might disagree. That's what I'm going to use because it's just an estimate. So I'm going to go up two and over three. There it is. So it's up two is up three. Not being born yet. Um, <coughs> next one. That one looks like it's on the grid. And maybe this one too. Maybe that one too, right, right next to the point. Okay, uh, besides, it's besides the point. That's a little play on words. And so we go down one, two, and over one, two, three, four, five. So negative two points. Okay, number nine. Find the slope of the tangent line graph of function. That's great. What color should we use? Green. Thank you for your decision. Okay, so we have to find the, the slope at this point. Think of it in a couple different ways. Um, I want to find the, the slope at, at x is 0. The cool thing about this is, well, I kind of don't need to know the y value. I don't really need to know what the y value is. It's kind of part of the process, but it's not something I have to find, I guess. I don't need to know where the point is. I can kind of figure out where it is. So I can go about it this way, f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 over h, and of course take the limit as h goes to 0. Okay. So I could do it that way. Or I could do the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And what can I, if I go this way, then how can I find the slope then? You look at the derivative and then put the slope uh, point in. Right. We're going to Find the derivative. What is the derivative? A uh, function that will always determine the slope of any point on the line. Did you rehearse that or something? A night in the mirror? Or not really. No, <laughs> that's pretty great. That's a, it's a, a, a function. I like the word function. You can use the formula, but I like function that will tell you the slope. That's exactly what it does. It's what it is. Okay. So if we do it this way, we'll find the derivative, the function. Okay. And this will find the value of the derivative. Right. I mean, we're going to do the same thing. I think this is nicer because if I later want to find the slope again, all I do is plug in whatever the x is. However, I'll do it this way because this way is a little bit more challenging. Why not challenge ourselves? Okay. So first, we need to find f of x plus h. That is 3 times x plus h minus x plus h squared. 3x plus 3h minus x squared. plus th minus x squared minus 2x h minus h squared. That's good. Uh, so I, I found f of x plus h. I'll just throw this on here. Minus f of x minus 3. Oh, I guess we should have done t. Well, let's just change it to x. Oh, we'll change it to t later. H and I'm taking the limit as h goes to zero. This first thing, this should always happen. Anything that doesn't have an h in it should get subtracted. Okay, 3x minus 3x, x squared negative x squared minus negative x squared. That cancels out. Now what do we wind up with? The limit as h approaches zero of h times. So I notice that every term has an h in it. So I'll take an h out of that one, this one, 
this one. What's this thing called? Derivative. The derivative. It's called f prime of t. f prime, it's a nice little notation because you know it's talking about f. A little prime in calculus tells us we're talking about the derivative of f. So this guy right here will tell us the slope of the tangent line uh, on f at any given x. So we plug in <coughs> 0. We don't need to worry about this 0. We just really need to know this 0. Um, 3 minus 2 times 0, so the slope is 3. As was discussed and agreed upon unanimously last time, that's pretty reading great. So just plug in some value for t and know the slope. <coughs> So it was 19 next? No, that was 7. Oh, is it the same thing? Oh no, we're going to find the derivative. Well, it's kind of the same thing, but we'll do that. Maybe a 1. Let's see. Well, we got 17, we got 19. They're the same question, right? Which one should we do? 17 or 19? 19. I don't know. Well, let's do this. Want to do 17 instead of 19? That's surprising with the cube. Yeah, I don't know. OK, I'm hearing 19 a lot. Even if it's a minority, it's a vocal minority. Okay, so the derivative is a thing we just did for the previous problem. We do f of x plus h of f of x, as opposed to f of, say, 3 plus h minus f of 3, like a specific x value. So we're just going to find f of x plus h minus f of x, or h, we're going to take the limit at that's finding the derivative by the limiting process. First we'll find f of x plus h, it's gonna make it easier. Plus h cubed times 12 times x plus h. Now remember, expanding a binomial, pretty easy thing to do. Right? We got one, three, three, cubed all the way down to x to the 0, and then start from the right, h cubed all the way to h to the 0. So x cubed, x squared times h, remember the sum of the powers is always 3, always 3, x h squared, and then h cubed, minus 12x minus 12h. And I'm just going to take out this equal sign so that uh, we don't get confused when I do this next. Minus minus f of x, which is x cubed, minus 12x, all over h. None of these guys are going to go together. There's going to be no like terms. The only time that you would kind of put things together here is if you had put in yeah, some number. I know. Some of those things would become numbers. Some of those things would become h terms and so on. But not this time. Not when we're finding the derivative of x. Negative 12x minus negative 12x. Zero. Zero. Oh, 
code. Let's take that h out. We got 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared minus 12. All over h. Cancels each other out. Let's just plug in 0 for h and we wind up getting 3x squared. Minus 12. Like these guys with H's just get multiplied by 0. They're gone. And what is this called? The derivative. We found the derivative. We found F prime. Function that will always tell us the slope for any given X. Stuff. 26. So um, I'm going to go ahead and find the derivative, and I'm going to plug in what into the derivative? Negative. Negative three. Don't even care about four. OK. Uh, so x plus 2 squared plus 2 times, sorry, not, I don't know why I'm putting 2 there. x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h plus 1 minus x squared, 2x minus 2x, minus 1 minus 1. H go to zero and we're left with two. This is, of course, as we've said several times, the derivative, the function that tells us the slope. All right, so the thing that it wants to know is the equation of the tangent line, of the line that is tangent to this graph here at this point. Well, this is the equation of a line, right? We just need to find m and b. So let's set. That. What do we do to find all the pieces we need? So this is a parabola. Um, let's see. So it's like uh, this. Okay. So at negative three, four, right there ish. What's the slope of that tangent line? What's negative four? What's the equation? And well, we're missing this guy right here, right? We do know this. It's got to go through that point, negative 3, 4, right? Because it's tangent to that curve. So it must go through that same point. So we put all that together, and what do we do here? Uh, find B. Find B, how? What's that? 4 for Y. 4 for Y? What 
else do we know? Negative four is our slope. And then x, which is same three. X is negative three. That's the point that it goes through. Plus uh, b. So we got four equals twelve plus b. B equals negative eight. That must be negative eight right there. So the equation is y equals negative four x minus eight. Use a graph utility to graph both of these things. First, we're going to graph the original function x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we're also going to graph y equals negative 4x minus 8. And uh, one other thing that we can confirm with our calculator is this. You ready? Do you have a calculator? Mm -hmm. Get your calculator. Get ready. Put in, uh, put in that function x squared plus 2x plus 1. If we need to know the derivative at a point from the slope of the tangent line, the calculator can tell us that in almost every case. I'll show you one where it's not correct. Make sure you don't need this guy anymore. We can forget about that. In fact, I'll go ahead and clear that out. But what we did find out is it certainly looks like I did it right. But it looks like I've got, I found the equation of the tangent line. At least makes me feel a little more confident. We'll take that out. I'm going to know what's the slope of the tangent line of this function. Okay, so here's our graph. We're going to draw it again. We went to calculate the slope, so we're going to set and count. Set and give and count. Right there. Find the x, right? Change in y versus change in x tells y over delta x. The slope, the derivative. This is how we say the derivative a lot, too, dy dx. The derivative of y with respect to x. And so we hit enter, and then it wants to know the x value, so we just plug in negative 3, and there we go. dy dx is negative 4. So good if all you need to know is the slope. Not really great if what you need is the derivative function. But uh, if you want to double check and you have a couple minutes to plug in this equation and then go over and calculate it, then uh, you should. And this is a really useful thing to be able to do on the AP test. Uh, when you're allowed to have your calculator, on certain parts you're allowed to have your calculator, um, have it. And if you need to just find the derivative quickly, the, the value of the derivative at a certain point, and it's a, especially they're going to give you a, like a complicated function that's very difficult, or maybe even impossible to find the derivative of. You're going to be thinking you'll use this as a means to finding that. Okay, so that's 26. If I ever move too quickly, just stop me. Tell me. Hold on a second. 34. Now find the equation lines tangent parallel to the given So we want to find the equation of the line is tangent to this graph that's parallel to this line. Okay. Now we need to do a few things, right? So let's, let's do something first. What's the first thing, or something that we can do first? Set that line. Oh, and that'll tell us what? That's all we need to know from this guy, right? Nothing else is relevant from that from, from the equation of this line. Because the only connection between this guy and that guy is that we have a tangent line that's parallel, and the only thing that's relevant in parallelness is equal slope. Right? So we have uh, y equals 3x minus 4. 
So slope of three. Right? Okay, we need to find the derivative over here. Alright, so x plus h to the third plus two minus x cubed plus two x cubed plus three x squared h plus three x h squared plus h cubed minus x cubed plus two h minus x cubed, and there you go. So next we'll factor out h, h times 3x squared plus 3x h plus h squared. Over h cancels out. We're all the while taking the limit as h goes to 0. Should be writing that in every step. I was going for speed here for a while. So we're plugging 0, 0, we just get 3x squared. This is, what is this? That's the derivative. It's the derivative. It is a function that will tell us the slope. Right? If I put in 2, what will that tell me? The slope at x. Two. The slope at x equals 2. If I put in negative 5, the slope at negative 5, right? But I don't know where I want the point to be, right? What do I, what do I know if I want? You want that same slope. You want the slope to be 3. So this, if I put something into this function, out will come the slope. What if I know what I want to have come out? Yeah. This is the function that will tell us the slope. So let's tell the slope what to be and figure out what x we need for that to happen. So 3x squared equals 3. So x equals, well, I guess x squared can equal 1. x equals plus or minus 1. Does that make sense? Should there be two places where this thing has a like slope that's the same? Because we know what this graph looks like. It looks something like this. So if I want a slope of 3, there and there it could happen. We've got two lines, two tangent lines. Right? They're both parallel to this line of the slope of 3. So we'll go ahead and uh, find them both. Find both of these equations. And then we'll extend the tangent to do that. Here it is. Y equals uh, 3x plus b. And another equation, y equals also 3x plus b. The difference between them is one of them touches, well, is is that x equals negative 1 to the, the original graph, and the other one is x equals negative 1. Did I say negative 1 or 1? I said 1. So negative 1 also, right? This equation, maybe, let's say, is for, is for maybe this line right here, and the other one is for this guy right here. Well, what next? I mean, how do I find these two different equations? So this one is going to be negative 1, right? and this one's going to be positive 1. Well, what about y? How do I know where to find y? Put it in the original function. Exactly, because what we're looking at is we're tangent to this point, we're tangent to this point. So that point that it goes through is a point on the original cubic graph. So we consult that graph to find those points. So the original was x cubed plus 2. So for this y right here, we take uh, negative 1 cubed plus 2. Right? And that's what that y is. So that's 1. Yeah? 1. <coughs> Okay, so uh, 
1 equals, just to make this look a little better, uh, we're going to add 3, so we get 4 is equal to b, so we get y equals 3x plus 4. Why don't you work that one out real quick? We have a consensus on what this y value should be? 0? Right? We're going to find f prime of x. We're going to find it using the difference quotient and letting h go to 0. So, limit h goes 0 of 2 times x plus h squared plus 5 times x plus h minus h squared plus x over h squared. Limit. Is that good? x squared minus 2x squared, 5x minus 5x, mm -hmm. limit of h goes to 0 of um, h times 4x plus 2h plus 5. It needs to like go off and I'm like, oh, the difference quotient does derivative if for no other reason than they ask questions like that on the on the AP test. Okay. So there it is. There's a derivative. Next, we're gonna use this guy. Okay. Previous question to find the slope of this guy at x equals 3. Okay. How do we do that? Plug it in. Plug in 3. And the slope is? Right. F prime of 3 means the slope of f at 3. There's a lot of information in that little thing. It's pretty cool. And then, so 12 plus 5, 17. That's the slope at 3. That's the slope of tangent line to f at x equals 3. Good. Any questions? And these were green. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, the 0 to 5 scale. I'll see. Yes, we're going to get this. Anybody watching? Did you start watching it? No, no one cares. I don't have that channel, so I can't watch it. What? Don't have you have it just came out I don't have internet. Walk right there. Really? Yeah. It's taking so much. So, uh, first, I did want you to mark these, like each one of these, differently. So let's go over some of those. What does somebody have for the y and for the x? You got dollars and what? Oh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. 
minutes and dollars, okay? How about another combination of x and y? Meters and seconds. So which one's meters here? Yes. Meters here, seconds here, okay? Uh -oh. Lastly, anybody else? Those are the only two combinations anybody thought of in the entire class. Let's use meters to feed and we got something else going. Meter, oh. feet, and seconds. Okay, good enough. Okay. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, this one intrigued me. This means that I think I, I, think I wrote that backwards on the thing. You would think the other way would make a little more, more sense? If I don't have any minutes, I have, I don't know, used? Yeah. So I, I go to a number of minutes as my input, the output is how many dollars. Okay, I don't know, I just graph that represents something that was minutes and dollars like that. Uh, like if you, if you use it for a certain amount of minutes, you pay positive, and then if you use it for even more minutes, then it costs negative. Yeah, you know, I never this. said to make it make sense with the actual graph, right? But I, I would like to know how that could be. Um, all right, so what I asked you to do was to graph f prime. Graph f prime. F prime being the derivative, derivative being the function that tells you the slope, right? So we're going to look, and this is the thing that's tricky for people. You look at the slope of this black curve, and then that translates to a number, right, a number that is the slope. That number, then, is the y value of the derivative. Okay, so going from a slope and then making that the y value of your function, sometimes it's a little bit tricky, but we'll do it, we'll, we'll be smart about it, because we'll say this guy, this one, this one, this one, and I meant for this one to also be one of these. But all these places have in common. Zero slopes, okay? Now remember, like, for example, this guy right here. Here's the derivative of this function. What does it do? It tells me the slope. If I find out the slope, I put in the x value, right? Is there an x value I could plug in to this and get zero? Yeah. Could you make that equal to zero and solve for x? So yes, there is a place where that has a zero slope. The value of that derivative is zero. And so this guy has a zero slope. Do you believe that? You guys has a zero slope somewhere? Why? Because what is this thing? Parabola. Parabola. Does the parabola have a zero slope somewhere? Yes. Yes, of course. Of course it has to. OK. Uh, but somewhere that thing has to have a zero slope. So what we're saying here is I go to say this x value right there, and I plug this x value into the derivative, what will I get out? Zero. Zero. So I should get a zero, right? The point x comma zero. And how about at this point? When I plug in this x, what should I get in the derivative? I should get zero out of the derivative. And here I should get zero, and here I should get zero, and here I should get zero. And all those places we should get a zero as well. I could go through all of these and do just the same thing. So let's uh, let's come over here. Between this zero slope and this zero slope, or on the derivative, we have two x-intercepts. Agreed? Makes sense. What kind of slope is this tangent line? Positive. And this one. And this one. And this one. And this one. Does this make sense? I, I have found all of the places where the, the slope is zero. So if I go between any two horizontal tangent lines, any two places with a zero slope, I must have in between all the same slopes, all going up, all having positive slopes, right? The only way to get to a negative slope would be to go through a zero slope, right? Now the derivative shows that as its y values, it says the slope here is zero, the slope here is zero, and in between, what kind of slopes do we see? Positive slopes, right? So here's zero. Right after that is not a very big slope. That's a positive slope. So just after that, right there, is a, not a very big 
positive slope, but it's a positive slope, right? And then it gets there, right there, let's say that, is a bigger, positive. Are there, does, it, does the slope continue to get bigger? Yes. Yeah, the steeper the line, the bigger the slope, right? So it keeps getting bigger and bigger until maybe right there, right? Like that's like the biggest slope between these two places. So maybe right there we see a slope that's, that's up there. And then all the other slopes are going to be smaller, and they're going to come down and back down to zero slope. Back down to a zero slope. And then we get all something in between all of those, and then our derivative starts to look like that. All right. Now we continue on and go past this zero slope. What kind of slopes do we see to the right of that? Negative. Negative slope. Negative slope. Negative slope. Negative slope. Negative slope. Negative slope, right? Okay. So we have negative slope, negative slope, negative slopes, until we get to about here and we see our, our biggest negative uh, slope of the tangent and it starts to come back up, right? Shallower and shallower, smaller and smaller, closer and closer to a zero slope. So it comes back up to a zero slope. So with a negative slope, somewhere, at, somewhere down here being the steepest tangent line. And after that, after that zero, what kind of slopes do we see here? Positive, positive slopes, positive slopes. Okay. Here's the thing that gets confusing. Like, you, you mistakenly make the connection between positive slopes here and positive slopes here. They do not have as easy a connection as you, as it might seem. Like that. Like positive slopes go to positive slopes. Now, um, the the thing that's happening is that this slope is. Is big, it's, or it's bigger than the zero slope, so we get a big y value. It and it gets steeper, so we have a bigger y value, and steeper, and we get a bigger y value, and steeper, and steeper, and steeper, so the y value of the derivative keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And higher. We come back the other way. To the left of this zero slope. We're going to slope to these. Negative. negative. They get quite steep. <coughs> We're going to dip pretty down into the negative numbers for slopes. So here, this looks like about the steepest slope is, is, is tangent to that point. We'll bring it back up here. All right, go back in here. What, what kind of slopes do you see here? Positive. Positive slopes. We're going to have some positive slopes. All right. And we're going to come around back down to zero, right? And we're going to continue to the left of that. What kind of slopes do you see there? Positive. Still positive slopes, right? So as opposed to all of these guys, Right here, we're not going to go through it, right? We're not going to go here, because what would that mean? Negative, Negative what? Slopes. slopes, that's not what we have here. These are positive slopes. Back that up. That's not right. We're going to come down, we're going to momentarily have a zero slope, and then the slopes are positive. So now, this red thing is a believable graph with the derivative of the black. zero slope here, we're going to see the y value of the derivative be zero. Here we get a zero slope, we're going to see the y value of the derivative be zero. What kind of slopes do we have in between? Negative. Negative. They're pretty small for a while. Not very big, right? Close to zero is what I mean. Right. And right about here, what happens about here? It's about as steep as possible. So right here we should see the derivative do what? Get its most negative. Get its most negative. Yeah, dip down to its lowest. All right. It starts to get steeper and steeper and steeper. It gets as steep as it's going to be and comes back up and has a zero slope. What kind of slopes do we see here after the zero slope? Positive one. Right. This one is not very big, so it's going to be barely above the y-axis. This one is bigger, so it's going to be above the y-axis more. This one is rather large, and it's just going to. The slopes are going to. Doesn't mean that like these guys are, have slopes that are parallel to each other or anything like that. You know, they, they could find parallel slopes, but they don't really have anything to do with each other. Okay, it's not like that. This one nests inside of this one or anything like that. The y value of this is the slope of this. Okay, like over here. What kind of slopes do we see here? Negative. Negative. So these are negative. Right? And so the y values that we see for the derivative should get 
get, well, really, really negative because this guy just keeps getting steeper and steeper and steeper, but his slopes are negative. Right? So this, the, the slopes themselves go off towards negative infinity. There we go, that purple guy right there, lavender, what have you, is graph. Zero slope, zero slope, zero slope, zero slope, zero slope there, and a zero slope there. We see what kind of slopes here? To negative, to positive, to negative, to positive, to positive again, to negative. So we see positive slopes down to negative slopes, negative slopes, positive slopes, positive slopes back down through to zero to negative slopes to positive slopes, to positive slopes again, and then down into the negative slopes. The connection we really wanted to see is that the slope of the original function is the y value of the derivative. The y value of the derivative. Now, you a question. Let's look at uh, this one's clean, simple. So we look at the original function and we look at its slope. This is where the units that we've marked on the axes come into play. Remember that this, this is a, a line, right? It has a, a slope, it has a rise or a run. What is the rise measured in, in this example? Y, y oh. meters, meters, and what is the run measured in? Seconds. So what is the, what is, what kind of units is the slope measured in? <coughs> meters <coughs> per second. So when I look at this slope right here, and I look at the y value of this derivative, the y value of the derivative is, Negative, say negative five, negative five, what? Meters per second. Meters per second. Right. So, what's that? Uh, I'm back there. Oh, so if your meters per second is negative, you're going yeah. backwards. Yeah, exactly. So this value right here, this y value, that any connection to this this rise here. This y value right here is how big your, what, what would you call this meters per second? What kind of a name would you get to meters per second? Speed. Speed, and if we include negative and positive, velocity, right? Speed and direction, magnitude and direction, velocity. Okay. Um, so what does, what, what does this thing, I guess, what is the y value of the original function? What is it? What units is it in? Meters. Meters, right? Meters. Right? So this is a function that gives me meters. This is like f of x, right? M of. M of what? Seconds. So this is a function that gives you meters if you give it seconds, right? What does this function give you? What does the derivative function give you? gives you meters per second. This one gives you meters if you give it seconds. This derivative gives you meters per second if you give it seconds. Right. And you can imagine the derivative of the derivative. Right. The important thing that we're learning here is that the derivative measures, in general terms, whatever these, these guys are measuring, the rate of change. How is it changing? How is this changing? How is meters changing with respect to seconds? How about dollars and minutes, right? How much are the dollars changing per minute? The slope, if we look at the derivative. Down here, this guy right here, if I put in x is uh, three, it tells me that, let me pick this one, like x is say four, and, and y is negative three, let's say. Okay, that means at four seconds, I'm going, I am negative three feet away from some reference point. Okay. But then the value of the derivative tells me that 
that I move in a negative direction. Right? This tells me the rate of change. Rate of change. Rate of change. Rate of change. It's dy dx. It's delta y and delta x. It's change in y versus change in x. It's rise over run. It's the rate of change of the y versus the x. Uh, the dependent versus the independent. All right. So the derivative. So if if f measures the relationship between two things, just the, so it's just standard stuff. You put in meters, you get out. Or seconds, you get out. Meters, you put in minutes, you get out. Uh, dollars, whatever it is. Uh, the derivative measures how are those things changing with respect to each other. So let's talk about uh, okay so if we have a function f right f of x and this is measured in um, seconds and this is measured in meters What does f of x, now keep in mind when I say what does f of x measure, what is f of x worth, what's the value of f of x, we're always talking about the y value of the function. What is it worth? The y value. You plug in something for x, we get out a y. Right? That's what the function is worth. So what does it measure? What does the function measure? Measures. It measures meters. Meters. Given a certain number of seconds, right? But in seconds, it tells you how many meters you are, where you are, right? Distance, position. What does f prime measure? Change in meters versus, and we give that the special name, velocity. Velocity. Oh, velocity, right. Okay, let's talk about some other f of x. Okay. Uh, Alright, so the x-axis measures the number of widgets that we're going to make. And the y-axis measures <coughs> how much money it's going to cost to make that many widgets. Yeah? And usually when you make more widgets, it costs more, yeah, more but also less. less. What? Because you're making Because people are buying So if you, like, it costs you less, in what way does it cost you less? Well, if you make, uh, let's, let's, let's imagine that you're not making widgets, you're making shirts, okay? You're, you're screen printing shirts. And you're going to make two of these shirts. Is anybody familiar with what it takes to screen print a shirt? Yeah. Okay, you got to make, you got to get a silk screen, you got to put some emulsion. I'm using words that I've heard before, I don't know what they mean. Emulsion and stuff, it's like stuff before. And so you, like, get the design going, and certain parts are blocked off, and other parts allow paint to go through, right? So this is kind of an involved process. If you make two shirts, it's going to be kind of expensive, right? But if you make 30,000 of those shirts, now it's going to cost more money, but I think in, a, in one way it costs less money. Not overall, right? Overall, it's going to cost you more. When you make more things, it costs you more money. It's not going to start costing you, you know, it costs $40 to make two shirts, but it only costs $4 to make 30,000 shirts. That's not what I'm talking about, right? How is it less, though? It's less per shirt. Per shirt, yeah, per shirt. So, if this is measuring, uh, you know, dollars, then what is F prime measuring? Cost per one widget. The stocks of the widgets. Or shirt, or whatever you want to call that thing. Right? So, if, if it looks something like, oh, it's pretty steep, right? It's pretty steep per shirt right now. And then it kind of levels off. It's still always costing more money, but we can see how the slope is getting smaller, right? So at this point, think about this, the slope of the tangent line at this point, at x number of widgets, 30 widgets or 30,000 widgets or however many widgets that represents, the slope is telling us how much it will cost to make one more widget, right? 
Does that make sense? It's telling this cost per widget at that volume of widgets. How many, how many widgets we're making. Okay. So the slope, the derivative, it's talking about the rate of change of the original function. Rate of change. Rate of change. You can't synthesize it enough. All right. Um, Find the derivative. Um, if I want to tell you to find the derivative of x squared, I can tell you this: d d x of x squared delta. Yeah. So this is this is y, correct? This is y. This is y equals x squared, right? This, this gives me y. So this is dy dx. Dy dx. The change in y versus the change. So use the limiting process, limit as h approaches zero, blah, 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 to find that. Okay, next, I want uh, u3 right here to find the derivative of x cubed. And then u4, you should find the derivative of x fourth. Okay, x plus h by 7x, so h, the limit as h goes to zero. Starting a little something called the power rule. It's a very nice rule because well, let's let's look at this one for an extreme exam, example. We would have to do f of x plus h. That would be x plus h to the fourth, right? Minus f of x h. So what's this? And well, it's not too hard, but it is kind of a long process. X to the fourth plus. Now we need another coefficient. Now let me need to write this down. One, four, six, four, one. Okay, so uh, I just add these. Gotcha. Uh -huh. Pascal's triangle. So plus four x to the third h plus six x squared h squared plus four x h to the third plus h to the fourth minus x to the fourth all over h. X to the fourth cancels x to the fourth. Uh, now we're left with h times 4x cubed plus 6x squared h plus 4x h squared plus h to the third h. It's like h is finding the limit as h goes to zero. Uh, same, same. So what happens when h goes to zero in this guy here? Uh, we're left with this one. You're just left with 4x cubed. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. 3x squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Feel like you see a pattern? Uh, what do you see? Uh, the coefficient is the same as the original exponent. Yes. And then the exponent is 1 minus. You got it. So. The derivative of x to the nth power. This is the power rule. How would the power rule look? And x minus one. There you go. There it is, the power rule. You bring down the power so easy. You just I mean, it's kind of crazy. But if you bring down the power, it becomes a coefficient, and now x is raised to one less. One less than Well, but here's, here's a question. That's great. But what's the derivative of 5x to the third? Now you might just say, oh, well, I know what it is, and just do it, because you think you just can, all right? But I want you to think about it for a second, all right? Uh, let's, let's forget about this for a second. The, the derivative of x to the third is what? 3x squared, OK. So. Is the derivative, as some of you might be thinking, 15x squared? No. Well, oh, darn. Well, think about it for a second. Think about it 
just for a second, okay? Um, let's think about the shape of this grass, the shape and all of its attributes. X cubed. X cubed. That's X cubed right there, let's say. F of X. X cubed. What would F of X, let's say G of X? If we have a, a G of X equals 5X cubed, do you know enough about functions and their graphs to be able to tell me something about what would 5x cubed look like if this is x cubed? <coughs> that would be, be x minus uh, 5 cubed. Would it get skinnier? Huh? Let's get skinnier? Yeah, yeah look at, think about it. Okay. This is, this is the y value we get. We plug in something for x and we cube it, that's the y value, right? Well, what am I going to do? What's different about this? Well, we're going to get the same x value, or the same y value for every x value except for we did multiply by 5. So every y value of this function is five times higher, five times farther away from zero, five times farther away from the x-axis than this. Okay, what do you think that's going to do to the slope? See what by a factor of five. 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 Wouldn't that make sense? Right. If this slope here looks like this, and then I look at this other function where whatever this is, whatever this is, the y value of this green function is going to be how high? times higher. Five times higher. It's going to go like this and it's going to go zoom up there. It's going to barely even have a curve here and then it's just going to turn down there. So the slope of this guy is going to be five times the slope of that guy. Would that make sense for any functions? Any function that you just multiply by five or multiply by one half or multiply by 17? The not only will all the y values be 5 times 17 times 5 7 so as high as the original function, but all the slopes will have the same you know, the same ratio. So it is the derivative of 5x cubed is 3 and 3, multiplied by 5, 15 x squared. Now in general, what we're saying here is of some constant times a function that works out. Constant times the limit. Constant times not, not the limit. The derivative. The derivative. Too many words in my head. Yeah, there's a lot of words in there. So really, it's not so much that three comes down and gets multiplied by five, though that's what we start doing in short order. It's really 5 times the derivative of x cubed. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, right? And 5 times 3x squared would give you 15x squared. Anytime you have a constant times a function, you want to find the derivative. Well, if you can like pull a constant up to the side, then you just have to worry about taking the derivative of the function itself. Okay, and then multiplying it by the constant. So now we've expanded even further. We can find the derivative of 15x to the 6th. What's the derivative of 15x to the 6th? Oh. 90x. 75 x squared. 75? Oh, it's the 6 times 6. Oops. 90. Follow the uh, power rule. One comes down, multiplied by two. That's two. X to the what? Zero. zero. One minus zero. Right? What's x to the zero? It's anything to the zero. One. So it's just two. Ah. Uh, so that's the question. What's the derivative of this guy? Really, we're taking these are separate functions, right? Five x cubed is a function. Four x squared is a function. Two x is a function. Negative one is a function. And we put them all together. We add all their y values, and we get this one mega y. 
So far, we've been doing fine. Okay, this is actually called the sum of difference rule for derivatives. I can take the derivative of this plus the derivative of this plus the derivative of this plus the derivative of this. What is the derivative of negative one? What is the derivative of negative one? Zero. Negative one. Zero. Yeah, if I look at this function, what does that look like? It's a flat line. It's a flat line right here at negative one. Right? What's the slope of this line? Zero. Everywhere. No matter where you go, the slope is always zero. So it's minus zero. That's called the, the constant. What's the derivative of a constant? Well, negative 1, th 30, negative 17, 4 fifths. If I have a function that's just y equals some constant, then the derivative of that is always going to be 0, because that's just a flat line. No matter where the flat line is, the derivative of the slope is always 0. Okay. So we have derivative of x to the n, n times x to the n minus 1 power, derivative of uh, f of x plus or minus g of x is <coughs> f prime of x plus or minus g of x. This is like two different scenarios, one where we're adding things, one where we're subtracting things. Basically, we just take the derivatives that are separated by pluses and minuses. It's the derivative of a constant times f of x is just the constant times f prime of x. Derivative of a constant zero always zero. Let's take a look at one of our favorite functions. start at theta, well I guess x, because I've, I've written x. You start at x is 0, what is the sine of 0? Zero? 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So there's a point right there. Now let's go out to pi over 2. Uh -huh. and 1. How about over to pi? 0. 0. Where is this? What's the angle? 3 pi over 2 does go down to negative 1. Over here, what's this angle? 2 pi. And what's the uh, sign? 0. Okay. Now let's get to uh, red. Red's going to be the derivative of the sine of x. Okay? Torn, why don't you come up here? And at 0, right here, of course, this. Graph keeps going in the other direction. Also, so at zero, just give us a y value where what you think the slope at that point is. Tyler, why don't you come up and uh, put a point for the derivative, showing us what the derivative is at pi over 2. Oh, yeah, now pass it off to somebody else. You can show us what is the derivative worth at pi. And we keep in mind the uh, nice shape of the sign and what torrent is already guessed. So what do you think? Yeah. Okay, put it. 
Being wrong is a great thing. It's a great opportunity. It looks good. Okay, Levi. Y value is what Torin has, right? Okay, so I'm going to correct it a little bit. It turns out this slope is actually exactly 1. This slope is 1 as well. This slope is negative 1. And these are zeros, of course. It's cosine. Yes. If you connect these guys, what do we get? We get, well, a function that is 1 at 0. At pi over 2, it's 0. At pi, at pi, it's negative 1. At pi over 2, it's 0. Or sorry, 3 pi over 2. And at 2 pi, it's 1. That's exactly what the cosine does. So, uh, well, if f is sine, f prime is cosine. Now, what do you think? If f, let's say uh, g, if g of x is cosine, Good guess, but it's wrong. It's negative sign. Okay, so look at this guy right here. What's the slope of it? So this is the cosine, right? So we're going to take the derivative of the cosine. What's the derivative at this point? Zero. Zero. Okay. What's the derivative at this point? Negative one. Here, zero. Here, one. Here, zero. So what does it look like? The sign, except negative. Except it's flipped over. You're pretty good at drawing those curves. Yeah, you should be an Thanks. artist. Sure, artists always get paid. Cost the plane close that way. All day long. Alright. Okay, okay. So, let's look at this. What's the derivative of the sine again? Cosine. Or sorry, not. That shouldn't be prime. That should be. No. Okay, f prime is cosine. And what's the derivative of cosine? Well, that is the second derivative. I took the derivative of the derivative, so I took the second derivative. Let's take the derivative again. What do you think that is? The third derivative. Okay, so we should use the class of multiple derivatives. What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. And what is sine being multiplied by? Here. Negative one. Negative one. The derivative of sine is cosine, and it's being multiplied by a negative. Let's take the fourth derivative. When you get to fourth derivative, you start writing that. Sine. Just sine. Because the derivative of cosine is negative, negative sine, but it's multiplied by a negative. So it's negative, negative sine. So we're back around. So if you take the derivative four times, you go back to the sine. Four more times. No. In fact, I mean, think about the derivative of a polynomial. Let's take a simple polynomial like uh, 3x to the third plus 2x squared plus 5x. Let's take the derivative of that. I shouldn't have written that either. What's the derivative of 3x to the third? Uh, 9x squared. Okay, let's take the derivative of that. 18x plus 4. Take the derivative of that. 18. Take the derivative of that. And it just kind of gets. So think about. I mean, think about the graphs matter. Right? 